Welcome, everybody, to part three of the three-part series on quality control testing of hardened concrete. Today, we're going to talk about electrical resistivity. Electrical resistance, ASHTO T358. This test is often called the resistivity test. In this test, concrete is subjected to a charge differential and the resistance is measured. What? What? What is it for? Why would we do this? Well, first of all, what it's, it, it's kind of like if you ever see a person that happens to be in cardiac arrest, that's never a good thing. That's when they're, they're, their heart's not working. And you'll see the paramedics come in and they'll bring the two charging plates, right? And they rub them together and they charge them up and you hear them, zzz, they put them on the chest and they say, clear, boom, they bring them back to life. That's kind of what you're doing to concrete. But the voltages that we use in this test are low, okay? And it's, it's not going to hurt you. But what it does tell you is how easily these electrons can move through the concrete. And if electrons can move freely, as in it's very easy for them to move, that's not very good concrete. And it's kind of an indication, if they move quickly, that Water or outside chemicals could also easily penetrate into the concrete. We'd use electrons because they just happen to be fast. Now, there are test, other test methods out there that do use water and do use chemicals, and they are quite useful, but they're not as fast as this test. So this test, people like it better. There's two main reasons why you would use this test. And I, I just mentioned number one. That's, again, if electrons can move quickly, that's not good concrete, okay? That means water and other ions can. But there's another good reason. When your reinforcing bars start to corrode, then one of the important steps in that process is actually to transfer electrons through the concrete. So if you can make concrete with a high resistance then once your reinforcing bars start to corrode, they'll corrode at a much, much slower rate because the electrons had a harder time moving around. It's because these two reasons make this test very useful and very helpful to look at the durability of concrete. There are basically two main methods used to look at this. One of them is called the bulk resistivity test, and one of them is called the winter probe. Now, there, be, there, there are some folks that think these are different tests. However, if you use the right correction factors, that means these account for the geometry and the location of the electrodes, you'll find that these two tests give you practically the exact same number, almost exactly the same. In the bulk resistivity test, you have a steel plate, and then you have this very, very wet sponge. How wet? You leave the sponge in water before you test it. Take it out, put it on the concrete, then you test the concrete. Just need something to transfer the electrons. And then you have your concrete. We have a battery hooked up to it, so we're sending electrons through it, and we measure the voltage and current. With this test, you actually have to use two different voltages and currents. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But from that information, you can get the resistivity. It's pretty straightforward. The winter probe is where you apply current on the outsides and you measure the voltage on the inside. The idea is that you apply a current from one to the other and you measure the resistance across the middle. All these are typically spaced at a constant um, spacing across the concrete. You touch the tip of these to the concrete, and this is usually a handheld device that looks something like this, and you measure the surface, typically of a concrete cylinder, although you could do a beam or you could do something else. One reason people like these tests is because they're fast. And if you can get information, even if it's not perfect, as long as it's fast, it's pretty useful gives you some insight to what's going on. Another great thing is that you don't have to make your own samples to run this test. You can run it on the same concrete that you would be using for the concrete compression test. That's right. 
take the cylinder out, just like we talked about earlier, you dry it off, you run this test on it, resistivity test on it, and then you break it. You get twice as, as, twice as much information from the same sample. Unfortunately, there's a few major challenges with this test, and I'm going to just talk about a few of them. Now, the results are very sensitive to the moisture content, the curing conditions, that's if it's cured in a fog room versus a lime water bath versus a bucket of water versus something else, and also the, the temperature of the sample. All of these things matter. This means that the samples have to be tested in a very consistent manner. But when I say very consistent, is that right? I think as long as we came up with a standard procedure to do it, we could follow that procedure. It's not too much to ask. But people need to realize, people that are running the test, need to realize that all of these things matter and you have to pay attention to them. Also, the type and the amount of aggregate has a major impact on the measurement and um, or doesn't have. Also, the type and amount of aggregate has a minor impact on the measurement unless the aggregate contains clay or iron. This can cause significant changes in the measurements and people need to watch out for that. But again, I'm not sure that's a big deal. I'm not sure that's a deal breaker because most of the time you'd be using a very consistent aggregate. Or if your aggregates did have one of these funny things in them, maybe you could correct for them. But the chemistry of the solution in the concrete has a major impact on the measurement. This means that if my chemistry of my fly ash changes from one measurement to another, they change sources, then that could have a major impact on the measurements the test would make. Now that could be useful. It could be a warning that lets you know that fly ash changed. But this makes it hard to pick a single resistivity measurement to get everything you need. Theoretically, we should be able to take the resistivity, though, and predict the service life of concrete, something called the formation factor. It's pretty crazy. But however, this is kind of challenging because we've got to get all these other details right. One possible path forward, at least in my opinion, is that um, if we kind of control a lot of different things, I think this test can be really useful. What do I mean? Well, although the, the method does depend on a number of things, it is fast, that's good, and it does tell us something really useful, that's also good. And for a given mixture or for a given set of materials, these items that plague the test should be pretty constant. This could allow the test to be used in the mixture design stage, as in when you're putting all your mixture materials together. You could run this test, and then you could compare it to what's produced in the field to see if it changes. And samples in the field, if they're very, very similar to what's in the lab, then you'd think the mixtures are probably pretty similar, and they're doing everything right. Because it's, it's much easier to get things right in the lab than it is in the field. And this test might give us insight into that. But if they're far off, then we'd know there's a problem, or at least that something is different. We don't always know what causes it, and it may not be a horrible problem, but we would know something is different, and we could go look for it, and that's helpful. For example, if, I, if my lab curve is here, and I have field curve, one field curve is here and it's close, that's pretty good. But if I have another field curve that's different, it's off. That lets me know that something is off. Something is different. Could be that the water to cement ratio is different. Could be the ingredients are different. Could mean they treated that sample poorly. Could be a lot of stuff. But we know it's different. So this could be a useful test. Like I said before, durability is tough. Getting durability right in concrete is really tough. And there's a lot of emerging tests right now that people are working on to try to get these things right, try to better tie down and understand 
the durability of our concrete. It's really, really important. Thanks.